Hey, Ian Thompson here. Welcome to this first tutorial on camera matching. The first tutorial will take a look at camera matching directly inside of Lightwave 11.5. And in the second tutorial, we'll look at matching in a different application and bringing that information into 11.5 afterwards. So let's get started with this first tutorial, uh, matching directly inside of Lightwave 11.5. Okay, let's take a look at the image that we're going to be using here. I'll open up Preview. You'll see it's a simple image with a one-point perspective. Um, and the EXIF data captured directly from a, a, a simple smartphone. So that's the image we'll be using. Let's hop over now into Lightwave. And the first thing we need to do here is tell uh, Lightwave where that image is and what that image is. So we'll open up our image editor and load it into Lightwave. Camera match one and open. So now Lightwave knows where this image is and it knows information, a little bit of information about this image. So we need to now select our camera and take the information from this image and use it in our camera. To do that, we click on the camera and we select the camera properties. Before we check those properties out, I'll just hit the uh, camera view here on this pull down menu. So we're looking directly through the camera. By default, the perspective camera is given to you. So we want to change that to a real lens camera and under this option all on this pop down menu we'll select from image because we're going to select our information from the image so we have to tell the camera which image we're going to use so it's this camera match one and you can see the model of the phone and all the information about that, that particular image as it was captured so i'll click ok and close this panel down now the next thing I want to do here is to be able to see my image in the background. So I'm looking through my camera but I can't see the image. So it's going to be very difficult for me to match any kind of perspective in here without having the reference in the background. So let's sort that out now. We'll go over to Windows, Compositing Options, and choose my background image as Camera Match JPEG. Now, you also have to check out um, D on your keyboard and make sure under the preferences here that your um, camera view, camera view background is selected to background image. If it's selected on blank, then you need to just click this little pop pop up menu and select background image. Now. We're not quite there yet with this image. You can see that um, it's quite stretched. And the reason for this is here. Uh, what's happened is when the camera has accepted the data from the, uh, from the photograph, it's got the values mixed up with the width and height. So let's correct that. It's an easy fix. 244 in the width, 2448 by 3264. Okay, now the dimension of the camera is matching the dimension of the background plate, which is what we wanted. So let's close this down and we'll close this one down as well. The next part is actually matching the perspective that we can see in the image, in this 2D um, image, and matching our 3D world to 3D World's perspective to the 2D perspective in the image. We do that with our camera selected. We will go down into the bottom left corner here and use the position and rotation values of the camera in order to match this, um, these two together. So I'll just make a quick start here by elevating the camera off the ground to roughly four four meters. Then I'll hit Y on the keyboard to change it to rotational values. 
and I'll change the pitch of the camera and also the heading of the camera and the bank. The bank of the camera is important because when this picture was taken we can see clearly that it was um, the camera itself was tilting to the right side so we can match that by tilting our bank value here across like so and already it's starting to look okay but we're not quite there yet it's worth pointing out at this stage that Lightwave does not have its own camera matching tool per se. Um, it's very much um, trial and error and matching, um, but you can get some really nice results um, using this method that we're showing you here. Okay, I'm going to speed this video up now and input some values specifically for this image and then we'll go through those uh, values that I've inputted uh, once it's done. Okay, so I've inputted um, these figures here into the um, into the rotational values, and and I just kept tweaking the um, positional values, bringing it forward and back, and and just trying to get that camera um, roughly into the position. It, 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 this is not by any means 100% accurate, but it's it's good enough to get a, a decent match here, and you can see that the perspective is, is is pretty much pretty much there. I'm not really interested in what happens behind this area here. Nothing's going to go into that area. Um, what I'm interested in really is, is this space here. So. It's also worth looking at on your um, keyboard by pressing D. Your grid square size can help as well by adjusting this one, um, as well as going to your camera properties here under the options, and you can adjust your focal length as well. Um, again, I'll reinforce it again. The um, the EXIF data is a very good starting point, but at the end of the day, um, what you see in front of you in terms of an image, if it looks right, then, then go with that. Even if the data uh, suggests otherwise, um, just keep tweaking it until it actually looks right um, and, and you can sell, sell that um, image to whoever um, you're trying to show it to. So at this point what I need to do is to bring in a an object. So I'm going to choose geometry and select a cube and I'll just bring this down to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and say OK. That brings my cube in here. So I shall bring it forward. Actually, I'll just need to size that up a little bit. It's a little bit too small. And change over to a full face wireframe. Now, I'll choose wireframe. Okay. Hit T on the keyboard and let's just move this around and see how good this match was. So I'm pulling this back here. It's pretty good. It's matching that corner. Move it forward a little bit on there. That's not too bad on that corner as well. Down to the edge. Okay, so that's a pretty good match there. It's not 100%, but but it's good enough for the purposes of this tutorial. Let's 
So I'm only moving across here. I'm not using the um, the the uh, y axis at all. I'm only using the um, the z to push it forwards and back, um, and the x to just move it across this plane here. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's bring in a, um, a shadow, a ground plane, to capture our shadows. So I'll bring in this ground plane here and bring it in here. Just match it up there. That's fine. And quickly change the surface properties of this. This is not really a surface in tutorial, so. I'm just going to go through this quickly. I'll add material node of shadow catcher and plug that into the material of the ground plane. And what that will do is, is it will catch any shadows cast from, from this cube object here. So next I'll select the cube and I'll give that a surface cube and I'll just UV map a quick texture that I've made on here. I won't use the um, nodes for this one. I'll just do a quick cubic and load in my image, texture image here. Use texture, that's fine. And let's take a quick look in VPR. Okay, there's my textured cube sitting on here. Our lights not quite right at the moment, so let's jump out of here. And select our light from down here. Hit the properties. And at 11.5, uh, we have this. Um, dome light which we can use. Where are we? There. And I'll change the map in here to uh, backdrop. So let's open up our backdrop options and I'll just add a quick textured environment here. I'll just do a cylindrical with the camera match object just to give us something there in the background. And finally, go over to my properties here and I'll just turn on um, enable radiosity as well. And I'll use backdrop as well on that one. Nothing too fancy. So, quick look through the light, and I want the light, it's quite diffuse on this day, it's a very cloudy day, so I'm just going to just do a, an overhead light, just pointing straight down like this. It's back to my camera view. And let's do a quick VPR, see what that looks like. Okay, that's not too bad. Ignore this around the sides here. This is just the uh, background image. This is this area here is what we're we are focusing on, um, and and that's okay. The the shadows on here were, were quite diffuse, and I'm getting a a, a fairly diffuse um, shadow casting here. So I'm happy. I'm happy with that. So let's just go back to the texture solid, and we'll just take this cube and just clone it a couple of times. So clone current type um, twice and move this object over here. Oops. This one here, maybe bring this one up. Whoops, wrong axis. And again. Okay, easier to take this one. Okay, let's move this cube a little bit closer to us. 
here and we'll just stretch this shadow catching object as well a little bit further back switch over to perspective it's just a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing there okay so we'll just move that back so it's going to catch the shadow from this object and we'll move our cube over okay so we'll move back over to camera view and we'll take a render from this and see what we get so everything set up just hit render frame Uh, one of the things with Lightweave is it's, um, it's, it's just incorporated my depth of field here. Uh, by default, I think it, um, it automatically sets depth of field, which I didn't really want. So let's do that again. Okay. So there you have this object. Um, it's not too bad. It's it's you know it's um, it's it looks pretty nice. It's 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 merging quite well with that plate. Obviously, better textures and things putting on here, and and obviously it looks like a very very CG cube here without no bevels or fillets on on there or any specular dots and roughness to the texture it, yeah we could really dress this up a lot better than it than it is here um, even down to some bird droppings on the top would really set this off nicely but um, there you go that's that's the end of this first section thanks for watching um, and stay tuned for the next um, tutorial where we'll take a look at a different application and, and match that information and bring it up back into Lightwave.